Say my name. You're Bofuri. I don't want to get hurt, so I'll max out my defense. You're goddamn right. Forget reality-bending anime girl proportions and the thousand-year-old dragon girls who look like ten-year-olds. The hardest part of getting your friends into anime is getting past these bizarro titles. I still haven't been able to convince anyone I know to watch I Want to Eat Your Pancreas based on the title alone. Like, I know they say not to judge a book by its cover, and I'm always telling people not to judge an anime by its title, but still. The way anime titles are structured is all over the place, and I'm not just talking about the length and specificity of the isekai titles that are coming out nowadays. But these outrageous titles happen for a ton of reasons beyond just the series having outrageous premises. Premises? Premisi. Premise. I mean, what's a more absurd title? Do you love your mom and her two-hit multi-target attacks? Or a show spelled FLCL that we pronounce Fooly Cooly? These freaked out titles happen for a lot of reasons, ranging from the oversaturated market of light novels to the completely non-standard process of translating these titles to English from the original Japanese. Because even with anime's rise of popularity in the West, there's still no consistent process for English naming structures in the industry. And these titles can be off-putting and super gatekeepy for new fans of anime. Fundamentally, weird titles are a quirky reflection of how unique the language barrier is between English and Japanese, and I'd argue that these freaky titles are a reflection of the freaks who watch them. Before I get too deep into this, I just need to hedge that I'm going to take a swing at pronouncing some of the Japanese titles as I discuss this, and I just absolutely don't speak any Japanese at all. So when I inevitably mess these up, please, please flame me in the comments. Please make fun of me. So when it comes to these translated titles, the basic rule to think of is if the Japanese title is relatively pronounceable and distinct like Jujutsu Kaisen or Haikyuu, it's got a decent chance of staying. If a title feels awkward to an English speaker, it's likely going to get changed, especially if it doesn't already have a well-recognized name associated with it. So all that to say there are basically no rules. It's kind of no-hold bars when it comes to translating anime titles, and this creates a confusing, wonderful, and often hilarious landscape of titles for the English-speaking audience. And even if there is a translated title, sometimes people still don't use the English name. And to me, as someone who's been watching anime for a long time, I think part of the reason why fandoms can stick to Japanese titles sometimes is that People remember days where we had to rely on fan subs if we wanted to watch what was actually airing in Japan. There weren't really any localized titles outside of the big shonen series, and even for those you had to wait like six months to a year just for the official releases. It's not now where there's like a wild west of fan translations, and, and things are coming out at a rapid pace. Fan subs or very shady dubbed anime used to be the best way to watch these shows back in the day. I'm looking at you, Ghost Stories. And because of this history and the inconsistency of translation for these titles, fans often use nicknames instead of the weird or, or very literal long translations we get. But this doesn't like change how confusing things can be. Like my friend kept telling me to watch uh, Baccarina, which I thought wasn't a real thing until I realized what they were telling me was like the official JNC nickname. And the show is actually streaming as my next life as a villainess, all routes lead to doom, which is a crazy name in its own right. Like. And a lot of shows are like this, like they have several potential names, both in English and Japanese. That time I got reincarnated as a slime has an official Japanese name that I'm not even going to attempt, but there's a contraction nickname for it that's Tensura, and also it's kind of like officially known as regarding reincarnated to slime in English. And you can start seeing how regarding reincarnated to slime could be like an official translation that's used, but then we have kind of like a localized version of that in that time I got reincarnated as a slime. And like my experience with My Next Life as a Villainess, the official title and the one that's the best known really impacts if people can or will watch these shows. The variation in anime titles, translations, and structures is huge. The spectrum extends from keeping the name the same to to changing everything about it and everything in between. There are famous examples where the name is changed, but in a small way, and it doesn't really have an impact. Like the movie Suzume. In Japanese, it's called Suzume no Tojimari, but in English, they drop the back end, probably because in English, it just works better with the title being the main character's name. The anime Grand Blue became Grand Blue Dreaming, most likely so that fans didn't confuse it with Grand Blue Fantasy. 
And for the series Undead Girl Murder Farce, there are versions where they drop the word girl from the title completely. And I don't know exactly why they did that, but maybe it's to create clarity. Undead Murder Farce doesn't raise as many questions. Like Undead Girl Murder Farce, is it a murder farce about an undead girl? Or is it a farce about murdering girls via the undead? <laughs> we'll never know. Mostly because I'm not going to watch that series. And in researching this, it really made me wonder, for these bigger shows, shows that I love, would a different name or a worse translation make me change my interest in watching them? The one that stuck out to me was Yu Yu Hakushu. It's a famous example, as depending on where you look, it was adapted originally to be called Ghost Files or something like Poltergeist Report. And if you just do a direct translation, it comes out to something like Yu Yu White Paper, which is correct in some way, but it takes a lot away from the actual translation. The kanji has three words and four characters. Hakushu literally means white paper, but it would more likely translate to something like report or guide. And the first two characters are super interesting. They're both the sound you, but they're different words. The first means dark or alone, but it also traditionally has connections to ghosts. And the second means fun or amusing. It's actually the same character in in the word to play. So a more direct translation of the title or like a translation for meaning could be dark fun report. But this is a great example about how translating directly without any research or without any context can be bad because dark fun report not only doesn't fit Tagashi's idea for the story, but it just is a stinker of a name. He actually originally named the story Ghost Man and then ended up changing it to Journey to the West, but it sounded too much like another manga that was releasing at the time. He ended up thinking of Yu Yu Hakushu and and it worked. And even then, if you were to ask someone what a good translation of that is, it could be something like reportings of the strange and interesting. And is that good? No, it stinks. But that's why these translations and these localizations are difficult and why not translating at all is sometimes the best route. And this starts getting to the heart of one of these big issues in translating these titles, which is that Japanese and English are very, very different. So like Yu Yu Hakushu, to get across this language barrier, authors and studios have to employ a ton of different methods to make it work. Some translations just just don't work well in English, so the decision is to keep their Japanese name because it works. Inuyasha is a much better title than Dog Demon. And Yoamushi Petal makes me want to watch more than Weakling Petal. But taken to the absolute extreme, some translations would just never work in English. Like some titles just could never be translated, either because they reference a proper noun, or because the play on words is deemed important. The show Naruto is called Naruto because it's about a boy named Naruto. Like they could have tried to to break down the etymology of that name, but that'd be like us calling Pinocchio Pine Eye. Gintama is actually a pun about balls, and I don't know honestly if the pun was more important or if the fact that a pun about balls as a title probably wouldn't play to the US audiences. And some titles are just better in Japanese, and I think you see this a lot with sports anime. Like, what's a cooler name for an anime? Haikyuu or volleyball? And when it comes to wordplay, the show Chiha Yafuru is a good example for why, as Japanese words can have multiple meanings. Basically, the show is about the main character's path in a sport, Karuta. The author of the series, who belonged to their karuta club in high school felt that the school years are some of the most important years of someone's life. And they picked a uniquely intricate reference to a poem for this title. It comes from like the first five syllables of the 17th poem in a poetry anthology, which are printed on karuta cards. In this poem, the title is used as an epithet and can essentially be translated into English as shaken in fury and swift in fury. And it shows that to preserve the author's meaning, Sometimes it's better if you don't try to bend over backwards to translate the titles into English. And possibly the most famous current example of this is Jujutsu Kaisen. Because before we get into this, be honest, would you rather watch a show called Jujutsu Kaisen or Sorcery Battle? Sorcery Battle actually isn't that bad. I would watch that show probably. Because in the title, Jujutsu is written with two kanji symbols, the first of which means curse or sorcery, and the second means art or technique. And with Kaisen, the first half of how 
it's written in kanji means to circulate, and the second half is a direct translation to the suffix of war or battle. Together, the term kaizen might be an attempt to empathize the circular nature of war and struggle against curses. When combined, the title actually translates to battle of the curses or sorcery fight. But there are also all these other layers and meanings that go along with these words because of the symbols that are used. It's not easy. I mean, it's really hard to translate this in a way that sounds dignified and actually communicates what the title intends. So to me, I think the author or the studio throwing their hands up and saying, let's just call it Jujutsu Kaisen is a pretty good response. Because if you don't like the name Jujutsu Kaisen, maybe we should just call it Woo Woo Wrestling and move on. Again, I think I would watch Woo Woo Wrestling. It looks, sounds kind of fire. But sometimes these like slightly messed around with kind of crappy translations go through and they actually work. Currently, there are two very famous anime that went through this process. The first is Kimetsu no Yaiba, or as we know it, Demon Slayer. The actual translation is something like Demon Killing Blade, which is just such a boring, boring title. And even though Demon Slayer is just like a slight adaptation of that, I think the title does a really good job of conveying how simple but beautiful this series is. And then we've got to talk about the elephant in the room. Attack on Titan. It's a dumb name and an even worse translation. And I'm not ragging on Attack on Titan as a series. I love Attack on Titan. Please don't be mad at me. But Shingeki no Kyojin is actually the translation for Eren's Titan, the Attack Titan. But the mangaka went ahead, he tried to translate the name himself, and we got an Aaron on in the middle of Attack and Titan that actually makes it sound more like a space anime about attacking Saturn's moon than reflecting anything that it's actually about. But unsurprisingly, this isn't an issue for fans. No one just refers to it by its Japanese name because the English title is a bad translation. And honestly, the name is like kind of sick. I know I said it's a dumb name because it is. Like it's a dumb name for what the show is about, but Attack on Titan rolls off the tongue. It's kind of, it's a banger of a name. It just has nothing to do with what the show's about, but is close enough to kind of be frustrating. And like Attack on Titan shows, sometimes these mistranslations, if we're even going to call them that, are just cooler in English than the real translations would be. And there's one example of this that I think reigns supreme. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta try to read the in Japanese, it's titled, I gotta, I gotta like read this out. I'm not gonna be able to remember this. Hagane no Renkin Jutsushi. In Japanese, Hagane no Renkin ju In Japanese, Hagane no Renkin Jutsushi, I got it right, fuck yeah, means alchemist of steel, but it was localized in the United States as Full Metal Alchemist. And Full Metal Alchemist is the greatest name of any show ever. Pack it up, go home, it's the best thing ever. Alchemist of Steel, kinda cool, kinda boring. Full Metal Alchemist, let's go! That gets me pumped up, let's go. We gotta save my brother, we gotta fuse this little girl and a dog, let's go! But whether the translation is cool or not, a lot of these titles do end up being modified for one reason or another. And a lot of those titles aim to represent the series more directly instead of just sticking with a direct translation. Kara no Kyokai translates to like Boundary of the Void or Boundary of the Emptiness, but it has the English title Garden of the Sinners. And Garden of the Sinners is actually like a subtitle that appears even in the Japanese titles of the novel, but it's a much, much better name for the series, and it's a lot cooler. And I do get that the title, The Town Where Only I'm Missing, might be a little bit of a mouthful, but it's an absolutely gorgeous title compared to Erased. Even though I love Erased, I think that's a banger of a title in its own right. And Dungeon Meshi is still called Dungeon Meshi, even though that translates to like Dungeon Meal, but I'm so happy that it's called Delicious and Dungeon. I think that that title, captures the the feeling of the series so much better than Dungeon Meal ever could. We can kind of consider ourselves lucky as this is something that can get way weirder in non-English countries. Like when the Dress Up Darling manga was released in Hispanic territories, it was given an English name still, uh, and it was released as Sexy Cosplay Doll. I, I don't even know what to say to that. Like what, who did that? The thing you'll uncover with this, though, is that there isn't 
any supreme authority on this issue. The closest we'll get are streaming services or whoever gets the right to localize these into English by the time that happens, or potentially just like the mega fandoms who are already obsessed with it by the time these get released in English. But again, this is usually my rule of thumb for how it'll play out. If the localized English title is alliterative or otherwise easy to remember, it'll usually stick. Like quintessential quintuplets is in no way shorter than Gotoban no Hayanome, but it's alliterative and it shorts to quince, so it was gonna win out. But on the flip side, if the Japanese name is more memorable than the English one, it'll tend to stick, just like Jujutsu Kaisen. And if the Japanese name has an easy portmanteau, and it often does because Japanese fans really love portmanteau nicknames, and the official name isn't really easy to remember, then the portmanteau will usually win out, like in the case of ReZero. Otherwise, the shorter name between Japanese and English might just win. Pretty sure that's why it's still called Mushoku Tensai instead of Jobless Reincarnation. It's those extra syllables, man. But at the end of the day, even if we as fans have our opinions, the publishers and the authors ultimately have the final say. If they have an attachment to their title or want to keep their brand unified, they can overrule the localization of the English translation and execute their right to keep the name however they want it. And it's not just because of these messy processes that you shouldn't judge an anime by its title. Because ultimately, the rich tapestry of what anime is is reflected in the wild range of titles that you see. I say this all the time, but anime is a medium, not a genre. And as a medium, you can find stories about anything containing any theme you can imagine, just like how you can find an anime with any title structure that you can imagine. Anime with innocuous titles like One Piece can often be absurd, while so many of the absurdly titled anime, like The Genius Prince's Guide to Raising a Nation Out of Debt, are exactly what they sound like. And that happens a lot with these isekai who have extremely descriptive titles. It's because they're usually adaptations of light novels, which have an extremely saturated market, so it's more likely that fans will decide if they're going to read it by the title than by taking the time to read the back. So like when you get a title like The Genius Prince's Guide to Raising a Nation Out of Debt, it's telling you what the series is going to be about. And for so many reasons, I'm not going to turn this video into like some plea about standardizing this stuff. Partially because I'm realistic that I have absolutely no sway in this world, but also because to me, the titles being weird and unpredictable is part of the charm of anime. These titles don't just exist in a vacuum. These titles are a reflection of the anime community as a whole. It's kind of like a self-affirming cycle, and it left me with a question, an age-old question. What came first? The weird, freaky anime title or the weird, freaky anime fan? In researching this video, I found so many weird anime titles, a lot that people have probably heard of, but I just wanted to mention three of them. I'm not even going to go into depth, but three of them that I think were specifically hilarious. So one of them is super well known, especially in the West, and it's Bo 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 Bo, which is a weird show about a guy who has like control of his no hair, nose hair. Bo 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 Bo, however many it is, like what a, what an insane title name. The the next one that I wanted to mention is Butt Attack Punisher Girl Gataman. I, I don't even know the premise of that show. I couldn't tell you what it's about. Butt Attack Punisher Girl. Like, is it about it's it's gotta be about a girl whose whose main attack is a butt attack. Um the last one is Cherry Magic. 30 years of virginity can make you a wizard. That one, I, I know what that one's about. And, like, I'm not going to say here in this video that I would watch it. But. That's all. Bye.